Hello everyone and welcome back to Coded by Jade. This video is the second episode of my series, Journey into Software Engineering. I'm going to talk about the things you should be doing in your first year to kickstart your career in software engineering and other coding related careers. This video is specifically for people residing in the United Kingdom and Ireland, as it is where my own experience stems from. Also, I found that there's little to no YouTube videos that I'm aware of that goes through the software engineering career process for UK applicants. So I hope this video will be of resource to you. As always, before I get into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to see more content. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram for personalized advice. The first step is getting noticed. This current era has been the best time to get noticed by employers, no matter your original background, and this has all been made possible by personal branding. The first thing you want to do is set up a GitHub profile. You can also use other platforms such as GitLab or Gitbucket, but as far as I'm aware, GitHub is the most popular of these three. GitHub is a remote version control system that will allow you to showcase your existing or new coding projects to potential recruiters. And if you're stuck on what coding projects you want to work on, then you can watch my video on how to choose a coding project, which will be in the information box. You can also use GitHub to contribute to open source projects, which I haven't personally done, but it's a great way to get noticed. The next step is to set up a LinkedIn profile. Now this is optional, but it makes it a lot easier for recruiters to get in touch with you and it can often be a preferred point of contact. LinkedIn is how I got invited to apply for my first spring weeks, which I'll talk a bit more about later on in this video. When creating your profile, it's a good idea to have a clear headshot of yourself as your profile picture and this can be business casual. The about section is a good way to introduce yourself talk about your current coding expertise and your career aspirations to help you stand out to recruiters. Also, be sure to add your education background, experience, certifications and skills, and also connect with your course mates, people you've networked with and fellow companies that you're interested in to help you become aware of potential career opportunities firsthand. And if you want to get started on how to network, then the best way to network starting university is to sign up to career related societies. In my first year, I signed up to two career related societies. The first was Women in Engineering Society and the second was my Computer Science Society at my university. The final step of getting noticed is to get your CV ready. When you're ready to start applying to companies, you're going to need a software engineering resume. I'm going to explain a lot more about creating a resume in a separate video, but this is a lot different to a CV that you may have written to get a summer job. And it is vital to get it right in order to get past resume screenings in your application process. Once you've got your personal brand figured out, the next step is to apply to Spring Weeks. In your first year of university, or up to your second year if you've enrolled in a four year undergraduate program, then the best way to gain work experience from companies in software engineering or similar careers is via Spring Weeks. You may be wondering, what are Spring Weeks? Spring Weeks are typically three to seven days, mini internships available before your penultimate year of university, where you can learn more about the company and their culture. Activities can range from work shadowing, group activities and projects, as well as the chance to network and engage in social activities. And Spring Weeks are a great way to get a company's attention. And more often than not, you will be able to fast track your application when you apply for the summer internship program in the following year. A lot of companies offer Spring Weeks and some of them include Amex, Amazon, Bloomberg, JP Morgan and Chase and more. You can receive notifications on which Spring Weeks are available by signing up to career sites such as Bright Network. Or if you have set up your LinkedIn account well, then recruiters will even message you directly to apply to different opportunities, as was in my experience. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about my own experience of applying to Spring Weeks. And in my experience, I actually thought that Spring Weeks were only targeted towards those interested in banking, accountancy or investment banking. But as I've highlighted, this is not the case most recently. And there's a lot more companies offering uh, Spring Weeks in tech and software engineering. Via my LinkedIn, I was invited to two Insight Weeks, one run by Amazon and one run by JP Morgan and Chase. The Amazon one was virtual and the JP Morgan one was in Bournemouth. So I applied for the Amazon one because I was certain I would be able to attend. 
The application process was pretty straightforward. I applied with my resume and was invited to complete a personality test to test if my persona aligned with Amazon's leadership principles. And I remember that the deadline to finish this personality test was the same day as the last of my January exams. So I gave myself just a little time to glance over Amazon's leadership principles before taking the test and answering the personality test honestly. And I say this to stress that this part of the application process shouldn't be overthought and you should just give it a go. I was lucky to be accepted to the spring program and I attended in early April for three days. The final step is being able to leverage your spring weeks and convert them into summer internships. Now that you have these companies' attention, the next step is up to you to secure these positions. The first step in securing a summer internship is to strengthen your data structures and algorithms, knowledge and skill set. A lot of people attempt to grind through leak code problems, but this won't be useful or helpful if you don't know the fundamentals. In my experience, I learned these fundamentals during my A-level computer science classes and learned more in depth about the space and time complexities in my own time. Based on your university, they may have a whole module that introduces you to these data structures and algorithms, which you can check by looking at your course's syllabus. For self-teaching, the resources I used the most were Wikipedia, Geeks for Geeks, Cracking the Coding Interview, and the Algorithm Design Manual by Steven Skiena. As always, I'll link these ISBN numbers in my information box. After learning about each relevant data structure or algorithm, you can attempt associated coding problems, which hint at how best to implement the solution. It's important not to attempt to brute force the solution, but to solve the problem elegantly, considering the space and time complexities of your approach. Beyond the textbooks, you can find more questions on HackerRank and LeetCode. The next step is to work on your behavioural skills, which are arguably just as important as your technical skills and where many people go wrong. Interviews often have a behavioural element where interviewers ask questions on your experience to see if you're a good fit for the company. The best way to work on your behavioural skills is to go out and actually gain these skills in practice, whether that be public speaking, leadership or teamwork. Companies usually post their culture online, which you can read and think up of examples of your own experience that relates to that element of the company's culture. When structuring your answers, you're highly encouraged to use the star structure, where you describe the situation related to the problem, identify the task needed to be solved, describe how you would solve the problem or how you've solved the problem in the past, and evaluate the results. Whilst preparing the answers are a good idea, it's important to listen to the question that the interviewer actually asked you to make sure your response is in line with the original question. Okay, so hopefully this video will allow you to get a head start on your software engineering career and set you up for success. Again, comment below or DM me on Instagram if you have any more questions or are seeking advice. And in my next video, I'll discuss how to create the best resume to get past resume screenings. Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.